Good morning. I'm Mayor Tommy Roberts. Welcome back to the Mayor's Table. My guest this morning, once again, is Rob Mays, our city manager. And Rob, it's good to have you again. It's always good to be here. Rob, we recently had some news coming out of Public Service Company of New Mexico. They released the results of their integrated resource plan. And uh, the content of that plan is giving us uh, some level of consternation here at the local level because the plan itself indicates that uh, PM feels it may be better for their customers uh, to abandon operations and production at San Juan Generating Station. And um, they're talking about uh, uh, effecting that abandonment at the end of the current uh, contract period, which ends in 2022. What was your reaction to the news and the content of that integrated resource plan? Well, you know, we keep in mind that the plan is a planning document that helps them map out their needed resources in the future matched with projected demands. My reaction was we were, we were shocked, you know, from, from a variety of, of positions. We were shocked from our ownership position in, in the uh, San Juan plant where we have ownership for the Farmington Electric Utility. So we certainly have felt that there was a commitment by P&M to, to continue to operate that asset for, for years to come. So really it was a kind of 180 degree change. And so I think shocked is probably a fairly good, uh, good answer to your question. Well, we have an ownership interest uh, in Unit 4 at San Juan Ge Generating Station, as you mentioned. It's um, about an 8% ownership interest in that unit. Our overall interest uh, in the plan was close to 3%, I believe, when it was fully operating. Mm -hmm. um, two of the four units are uh, going to be shut down if they haven't already been shut down. And so the plan was to operate it into the future as a two-unit configuration. Mm -hmm. So now we're we're looking at the full and complete closure of the plant 2022 unless some different course of action is taken. It would appear that that PNM is set on a course of ceasing operation at San Juan Generating Station in 2022. Um, as you mentioned, it's a, it has a potentially huge economic impact on Farmington and San Juan County and the surrounding region. There are 650 jobs, uh, direct jobs uh, associated with the operation of the plant. Uh, some of those jobs in the form of mining jobs at San Juan Coal Mine, that's operated and owned by Westmoreland Company. And then the remainder of those jobs are direct at the plant itself and uh, uh, tied to the uh, actual generation operations at the plant. So you lose 650 more jobs out there. We've already lost a number as a result of of uh, the mothballing of two units. Right. Uh, we lose 650,000 more. I've been told that each of those jobs has a value of about $100,000 a piece. So that's a value of about $65 million of uh, wage, uh, salary associated income in our community that we lose the benefit of. Whatever spending power is associated with that $65 million, yeah, we lose it. That's right. and. It's, there's also, of course, the trickle down. That's the direct jobs. Four Corners Economic Development uh, Agency did an economic impact study and it showed a 2.43 to 1 ratio. So every one job in the economic base job lost out of the mine, there's a 2.43 additional jobs. The total, the total job loss is estimated at somewhere around um, 1,600, just under 1,600 jobs. Um, the total economic loss to the state of New Mexico, about $170 million in, in total. So it's not just a, a Farmington or San Juan County issue. This is really a statewide issue. Um, we've been told in discussions that this is the second or third largest industrial complex in the state of New Mexico. And so what we're hoping to happen is that the state of New Mexico, our governor, our legislature, other leaders around the state will recognize this just isn't a Farmington issue. This is a major economic impact on our entire state, our school systems, um, our state revenues, and of course, uh, county and, and uh, the city. Of course, San Juan County government relies in significant part on the property taxes generated by San Juan Generating Station. So that's a part of the economic impact on San Juan County. Um, the state is receiving severance 
taxes from uh, the production of coal. I'm not sure if there's a royalty uh, there or not. I believe there is. There's a royalty revenue stream associated with coal extraction as well. Uh, of course, there's uh, a number of, of corporate taxes that uh, are derived from the operations of private sector industry in connection with the coal industry. So the number is fairly staggering, and yes. these are numbers that uh, are impactful even in the best of economic scenarios, but we aren't living in the best of economic s scenarios in the state That's or right. the county or the city. So uh, it's another challenge. It's a, it's a huge challenge. The question is, how do we respond as leaders in our communities at the local level? Uh, do we just accept this as a done deal and uh, say we're just going to have to learn to adjust to it, uh, adjust to the loss of revenue, uh, adjust to the loss of jobs? Or is there a, an opportunity to be an advocate for the continued operation of San Juan Generating Station beyond the planning horizon of 2022? Uh, let's talk a little bit about what's going on at Four Corners Economic Development yeah. Service. Well, to answer the, kind of the rhetorical question, do we just accept it or laying down or do we fight and do everything we possibly can? You, you have pledged and others have pledged that we as a city will do everything that we can to save these jobs for these families as well as the overall trickle-down e impact. Um, so through Four Quarters Economic, economic Development, our economic development arm, as we've said many times, instead of having our own economic development uh, department, we, sir, we, we have embraced a regional strategy. And I think for times like this, that regional strategy really shows itself to be critical when we're dealing with something like this that goes far beyond Farmington. So we've talked about a three three-legged stool of, a, of an approach and um, you know the area of the working through the PRC both in the in the IRP process but in the potential abandonment process that's still to follow hoping to get the state to take into consideration the the widespread impacts on our on our state and virtually really every citizen in the state of New Mexico affected by 170 million dollars of statewide lost revenue um, a, a second leg through the legislative process to engage our legislature again in educating them and, and, and getting them to engage in this reality that if this particular revenue source goes away, where do they plan to make it up from, for? You can't just keep uh, moving away from certain fuel sources and, and other areas in favor of others or subsidizing one in favor of another. Ultimately, that tax revenue has to be made up somewhere at the consuming end. And then uh, finally, we have even talked about the, the really big idea of, of seeking and, and promoting um, ownership of this, of this plant through merchant investors, maybe outside investors that uh, venture capitalists that might come in and actually um, pick up where P&M is, is exiting and perhaps um, um, invest in this plant and, and uh, be positioned for the future of selling um, electricity on the market through the merchant power. I think one of the things that we really need to stress in trying to educate people about the implications of the closure of the plant is that coal is a commodity. You, you can produce something real, something tangible, take it out of the ground and use it in, in a productive way. Oil and natural gas are commodities as well. So when we, when we extract those products, they're taxed in a way that provides revenue, a revenue stream to state government and to local governments to some extent. But the state relies heavily on that flow of tax revenue that's associated with the extraction of those commodities. If we're advocating for a totally renewable uh, energy portfolio, we have to bear in mind that the sun and the wind are not commodities. We haven't devised any way to tax right. solar and wind. And uh, so there's going to be a, a policy challenge there to many, many people involved in government and uh, responsible for providing services to their citizens to find a replacement for that stream of significant revenue that will be lost. That's right. I believe that we've got to have a a uh, strategic uh, plan involved uh, to to that involves all of our all of our energy resources 
solar, wind, nuclear, coal, natural gas, uh, oil. I think they all have a place in our energy portfolio and they can work off one another and they can be utilized in conjunction with one another for the, for the effective and efficient use of our, uh, of our resources. I, um, I don't know how we're going to get beyond uh, that, but uh, that's going to be one of the consequences that we have to deal with. The, um, the PRC process, the Public Regulatory Commission process, is one that uh, is of interest to us. Ultimately, PNM will have to file an application for abandonment of the plant, and the Public Regulatory Commission will be that state regulatory agency that considers that application for abandonment. So one of the prongs of attack would be to try to convince the Public Regulatory Commission that abandonment's not in the best interests of the state and the local communities. Uh, what's your best guess about the success of that effort? Well, again, I mean, I think all of these uh, efforts are a, a pill climb. We need to be realistic about them, but nevertheless, we have to do all that we can. And currently, the rules are, very, are defined very narrowly that the PRC would only take into account the the rates, the rate payers, and, and the and the uh, recovery of cost by P and M. What we would want people to understand that there are other losses. These same rate payers are going to be affected by, you know, statewide by other losses to state revenue, and so they may end up paying more somewhere else and paying less here. I mean, there's two two misconceptions that I actually came across just yesterday from people fairly knowledgeable that ought to know. One is that someone thought that. Uh, if the coal plant was to continue beyond 22, that hundreds of millions of dollars had to be spent in upgrading technology to keep that plant going. That's just not true. Those upgrades uh, have been made. They've uh, been done. In full compliance with emission right. standards that have been and established. And the rate payers of P&M are going to be paying for those things. As Additionally, so, so if another operator would want to come in and take, take over where P&M wants to step away, they would not have hundreds of millions of dollars. They'd have virtually no investment in capital associated with environmental issues. That plant already exceeds even the Clean Air Act had it passed. The second issue is a lot of well-meaning people suggest, well, why don't they just convert that plant to, to natural gas? Then we can have the best of both worlds, a cleaner fuel, one that's produced locally. But we have to keep in mind and remind people almost daily it seems it comes up and we've had people post on our Facebooks why don't you convert it to natural gas the natural gas plant out there for the associated megawatts is about 30 jobs and there'd be certainly associated to you know another 2.4 percent or 2.4 for each of those 30 but when you compare 30 direct jobs to 657 direct jobs there just is no comparison on the economic impact converting that plant to natural gas does not help our economy or, or save any of these jobs that yeah. are at risk. Well, it's a, it's a troubling problem, and it's one that's going to require a lot of, of thinking and um, collaboration to, to, uh, to solve, to hurdle. Uh, it, it may very well be that we'll be uh, approaching 22, 2022 and re recognizing that that plant will no longer be in operation. There's a strong likelihood that that will be the case. And then we'll be uh, dealing with the, the fallout of that problem, the lost jobs, the lost revenue to, to government to provide the kinds of services that our citizens have uh, come to expect and to appreciate. I'm intrigued by the purchase option, and, and we're going to be spending quite a bit of time at our level uh, exploring those options and opportunities. And, uh, but one thing that I'd like to assure those uh, in our viewing audience who are concerned about what's going to happen ultimately at the plant is that we are going to be engaged uh, at, at Rob's level and my level and other different levels. We're going to be engaged in that discussion about are there solutions that would provide for the continuance of the operation of the plant beyond 2022. We would recognize that this is not going to be a, an operation in perpetuity. There's a finite life left for that plant. But we think that it has a reasonable lifespan beyond five more years. And uh, we could reasonably be looking out into the 10-year the, the life, maybe the 15-year life. 
but uh, a lot of challenges, a lot of hurdles to be cleared before we can even get to that kind of a, a discussion about interest. But uh, my point is, uh, for those who are viewing, is that we are engaged in that process, going to be doing what we can to have that discussion to explore all uh, avenues available to us. Rob, is there anything else you'd like to add on well, this topic? Well, maybe two things. One, I, I want to thank you for your leadership in this. You stood in front of several hundred coal miners and, and pledged that you would do everything within your power, within your influence, and you have been doing that. A lot of work behind the scene has already happened, and there's much more to come, so I appreciate your leadership as our mayor. And the other thing is another comment that you have been pointing out to that we have to also maintain optimism. We're, we're certainly not ready to concede that we're not, that this plant's going to close. But if it does, we as a community will find a way to, to move on. This is one big hurdle, but there are, there are other things happening in our economy, other, pro, you know, other good things happening that uh, we certainly still have a good future in the city of Farmington and for our residents here. Rob, I appreciate your uh, insight and observations on this issue. Thanks for being with me this morning. I want to thank all of you for tuning in this morning and uh, viewing this segment of the Mayor's Table. And we'll look forward to seeing you again next Monday. Thank you.